Ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to be talking about the Monster Club. You've been invited to the Monster Club. Now, if you don't know what the Monster Club is, it's basically an anthology film from 1981, and it has a pretty decent-sized cast as well as basically tells a few different stories set in this particular world of monsters. It takes the traditional werewolves, vampires, mummies, etc., and then also, you know, says, well, what would happen if we were to combine them? Would we get new things? And then it goes into some stories surrounding those. I wanted to just talk to you about it today and then, uh, you know, just give you my thoughts. Oh, thank you. So the first story we have here is actually just the introduction. The introduction gives us a little bit about what this world is, and it lets us know that there are various different monsters that all have offsprings and have offsprings with other offspring, and it creates these various different trees of monsters. What's this? Oh, that's a monster's genealogical chart. You see, first we have the primate monsters, vampires, werewolves, and ghouls. Now, a vampire and a werewolf would produce a were-vamp. But a werewolf and a ghoul would produce a were-goo. But a vampire and a ghoul would produce a vam-goo. A were-goo and a were-vamp would produce a shatty. Now, a were-goo and a vam-goo would produce a maddy. But a were-vamp and a vam-goo would produce a ratty. Now, if a shatty were to mate with a ratty or a maddy, the results would be a muck. A muck? Frankly, that's just a polite name for a mongrel. The first story that we deal with after the, the introduction here is the Shadmok. Essentially, the Shadmok is an individual who had a lot of money and came from a family of people that, uh, you know, had a lot of wealth. However, he was very unattractive and scary looking, so to speak. Although, you know, they don't use much makeup on him here. They just kind of give him a, a pale look. <laughs> And so the way that the woman reacts to him in this story is exceedingly over the top. But basically, this woman, who's not exactly the best person, starts to work for this guy under the guise of uh, kind of robbing him with her boyfriend. However, the Shadmok takes a liking to the young girl, and they begin a relationship, and he offers to marry her. Angela, will you marry me? She agrees in order to be able to take the money, and she gets caught, though, when she's going in there to rob the guy. <laughs> it's all really sad, and honestly, I kind of felt bad for the woman because her boyfriend was like this real piece of shit who was kind of pushing her to do it, even though she very much didn't want to and multiple times said that she couldn't do it to him. But we got it all planned. Can't do it to him. And but she's the one who gets like fucking scarred and broken and literally fucked up because she doesn't want to be with this guy. And it's a really sad moment where basically uh, she gets caught stealing the money and the Shadmok goes, oh, but you could still love me. I don't care about the money. And when she goes, no, I can never love you. She starts to go in on him like, oh, you're you're ugly. You're scary. Blah, blah, blah. Really fucked up shit. And so then he whistles. Now, this is said to be something that nobody really survives, however, this woman did, but it did cause her to be completely, like, melted, essentially, and I'm sure she died shortly after, uh, and it, it was just a very interesting but kind of heartbreaking, uh, like, story. <laughs> So that one was definitely one of the weirder ones. Another one that we had was the vampire story. The vampire story I thought was probably one of the, the least interesting ones because it was very much just the standard vampire story where there is like Dracula and there are various vampire hunters who are trying to hunt him down. <laughs> Ha! <laughs> 
However, I like that it had a twist on it, making Dracula actually the good guy this time around. There are these vampire hunters that are kind of like priests, I guess, that have killed thousands of vampires, and they finally hunt down the master of vampires, Dracula, and we also see that Dracula has this kid. That kid doesn't really know what he does for a living, and so it's, it creates this interesting thing where the kid is tricked into going down into the basement where the father sleeps during the day to see what his chamber looks like, and he gets super scared because he realizes, hey, my father's a vampire. Uh, he then has this moment where he realizes that he has led these vampire hunters to the father be uh, basically by giving away too much information and uh, he runs outside of the home after being scared which gives them the idea oh hey he must have went down there he's probably alone and they then go down and try to kill the vampire he should witness the end all right guys so so real quick oh wait oh wait what the fuck what the what, what what is that what the fuck that's right it's an ad all right guys this is an ad have you ever wanted to get a, a part of a film club where you can discuss various films with peers of of like-minded individuals that are into cinema have you ever wanted to get uh you know extra content and be uh, early to the show when it comes to the movie reviews here on this channel or with uh you know seeing the newest trailers getting updated with the various news in the movie industry well then you should check out the smoke and sessions membership go ahead and uh, click either the join button below or you can go into the description and click the link at the top of the description and it'll take you to more information about each of our categories and what they can do for you. Now back to the video. However, uh, you know, what happens is the vampire gets up and bites the neck of the main vamp hunter, which I thought was interesting and was a, a fun kind of like schlocky moment for sure. And then basically he has to be then killed by his vampire uh, hunter brethren. Uh, he refuses to do so. He really doesn't want to be killed, but they go through with murdering him and he's fucking dead. Then we end up finding out after they leave uh, that the vampire Dracula actually lived. He had a stake proof vest on and survived. Um, this story was uh, also, yeah, it was just not exactly very interesting. It was kind of basic with a little bit of a twist on it, but it was uh, decent enough to keep me invested uh, throughout. Uh, and then finally, we have uh, the ghouls uh, story. You shall see. So basically, there is a movie director who goes out to this village uh, to kind of look for locations to shoot at. And when he arrives to this village, it's a Resident Evil type situation where everybody here is seemingly a part of this cult so that we really don't know who they worship or who they listen to at the end of the day. You stay here. Uh, however, basically, uh, he starts running around this town after he realizes that he's in danger, and he comes across this younger woman. This younger woman has seemingly been trapped there for a long time and no longer wants to be, and so he tries to help this little girl escape. When I escape, I want you to go with me and live the life of pretty girl should. However, while they escape, she ends up getting hit in the back of the head with a rock in this really fucked up but really funny moment. <laughs> And uh, then what happens is the guy continues on down to the road, uh, the highway, and flags down a police car. However, upon getting in the police car, he sees that they start taking him back to the village where he then finds out that the police have been feeding the cult people for this entire time and bringing people back to the village to be killed for either some sort of ceremony or for food. <laughs> Thank you.
It's a really creepy and fucked up moment when you realize what's going on, and I definitely thought it was one of the creepier ones of these three stories for sure. There was some weird, like, sexual tension between the younger woman and this guy even though they're like 40 years apart so that was really strange but actually this one was my favorite it really did remind me of like resident evil in some ways or like silent hill in it there being this uh kind of removed from the regular world kind of village or something like that that is totally off to its own devices and is horrific in you know the ways that they they do things and the things that they worship <laughs> Thought it was a really interesting idea, and to see it all the way back in 1981 definitely was quite cool. Uh, then, basically, we have this moment where uh, throughout this whole thing, there was a guy that was being introduced to the Monster Club. I'm just a and that's why we were being told all these stories. And then that guy is a human, it turns out. So the guy who was telling him all these stories goes, hey, we want you to be part of the monster club. But all the monsters start going, yo, he's not he, hes not a monster. He can't do that. I want to propose my friend here as a member of this August assembly. But he's a, he's a human. But then the main guy that's telling the stories is like, no, well, listen, humans are the biggest monsters there is. They kill more humans than we do. And I was like, yo, that's absolutely fucking based. And everybody agrees, and they let him in. <laughs> This is a, a really just kind of basic but fun and heartwarming story, a set of stories in some regards and creepy in others. I think that this hit the schlocky notes as well as like the family horror and every other aspect in some really good ways that, you know, didn't leave you wanting too much more but also didn't overstay its welcome. I definitely liked it and I would give this one a three out of four stars. Welcome to the Monster Club. The Monster Club. All right, guys. Well, thank you for joining me during this uh, review of the Monster Club. Next, we're going to do Uncle Sam. Uncle Sam wants you. Which was a crazy hell of a ride. So I'll see you all in that one. Just to open up a new account